Chapter 1. Create like your life depends on it. Why creativity matters. I've been collecting signals on the landscape, indicators that we are increasingly valuing our uniquely human ways of thinking and creating in our business life. One signal comes from the management consultancy Capgemini. In 2015, Capgemini published a report titled, When Digital Disruption Strikes, How Can Incumbents Respond? It begins with this striking sentence. Since 2000, 52% of companies in the Fortune 500 have either gone bankrupt, been acquired, or ceased to exist. The core reason for this failure has been chalked up to an inability to adapt. But let's dig deeper as to why it's hard to adapt. Part of it involves the too-big-to-fail assumption and superiority complex that emerge when organizations find themselves at the head of the pack. But where does that mindset come from? It is not enough to say that these firms don't innovate quickly enough. They get complacent and stuck. Michael Foreman, chairman and CEO at FS Investments, told me that as organizations get larger and more focused on risk management, they easily fall into what he calls the tyranny of no. They solve for no instead of for yes. Solving for yes is the fulcrum of creativity. He observed that the larger reason for why successful companies fail is that they do not cultivate their capacity for human creativity. A second signal showing up in an unexpected place comes from the World Economic Forum. In 2016, the WEF predicted that by 2020, creativity would rank as the number three job skill. Consider that the WEF had ranked creativity as the number 10 job skill in 2015. What is interesting is that they predicted critical thinking and complex problem solving would rank first and second by 2020. But guess what? Creativity requires critical thinking and complex problem solving. So we essentially have creativity leading the pack in important job skills for the future of work. Yet another sign I've witnessed was in the Showtime hit series, Billions. Character Wendy Rose is among the C-suite of executives at Axe Capital. She counsels the group of intense, testosterone-driven venture capitalists to tune into their inner voice, learn to meditate, and visualize success. I am increasingly seeing the value of people with backgrounds in the humanities, psychology, and cognitive science in unusual spaces. Perhaps the biggest signal of all occurred in the summer of 2019. Business Insider announced that a convening of leaders of Fortune 100 firms had culminated in an acknowledgement that stakeholder value was as important as shareholder value. While many have a wait-and-see attitude about how these companies will demonstrate through their actions that people and the planet matter just as much as profit, it is significant that these leaders spoke this value out loud. Why do we dismiss creativity? Research from Stillcase, a furniture design company, presents interesting insights about collaboration at work and creativity. They surveyed 4,500 people in Germany, France, England, Spain, the United States, and Japan. The following were some of the more relevant points regarding creativity. 14% were not given a chance to express their creativity. 55% wanted to be more creative in their role. Generation Y and Generation Z showed more creative ambition than older workers, 60% versus 50%. Creative blocks included these, uninspiring space, 20%, existing workload, 36%, a lack of guidance or permission to be creative, 19%, outdated technology, 20%. In spite of all these signals on the landscape, I'm convinced that we don't hear creativity emphasized more in the boardroom because we don't actually understand creativity. I define creativity as our ability to toggle between wonder and rigor to solve problems and produce novel value. While many companies are trying to figure out innovation, most corporate cultures rarely utter the word creativity, and there is not a carved out space in the boardroom for creativity. This goes back to the ways that we have partitioned it off as being only in the domain of the arts, making creativity appear inaccessible and in the realm of the few, not the many.